It's time to enchant and eliminate. Come along and I'll show you how. Welcome to the Oath Breakdown. If you enjoy fun, budget Oathbreaker content like this, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you know when I make new content for you. Enchanting Young Man is a Teo the Shield Mage deck for under $25, built with a budget in mind. On the Oath Breakdown, I will break down a budget Oathbreaker deck designed to introduce new players to the format and build it back up so you can see how the deck works and how it was designed. Now let's get into it. In today's deck, we will be protected by our Oathbreaker, Teo the Shield Mage. For two and a white, he is a five loyalty planeswalker that gives us hexproof, and if we minus two him, we create a 0-3 white wall creature token with Defender. Teo's low cost will allow us to get him out early, and his static ability will protect our face from targeted spells and abilities. And his minus two will make us some good 0-3 blockers as we set up our board state. The signature spell that protects our enchanted beaters in this deck is Karametra's Blessing. For one white, it says target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn, and if it's an enchanted creature or an enchantment creature, it also gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. For a low cost, this spell will pump a creature and give it hexproof and indestructible, and we will be able to make use of this spell at least a couple times before it gets too expensive for us. So that's what's in our command zone. Let's dig into the game plan. This is a deck that wants to play small evasive creatures and enchant them up to swing through. How do we win? Our goal is to swing through our opponent's defenses and to close out the game with damage one player at a time. This is a very focused, low to the ground deck and because of that it has a power level of 7. Now on to the breakdown. Let's start with the ramp that helps us cast our creatures and enchantments in plain and simple. For one in a white, Oroskos Explorer is a 2-2 Cat Scout. When it enters the battlefield, we search our library for X Planes cards, where X is the number of players who control more lands than us. We reveal those cards and put them into our hand and then shuffle our library. Knight of the White Orchid for 2 white is a 2-2 Human Knight with First Strike, and when it enters the battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than us, we may search our library for a Planes card and put it directly onto the battlefield and then shuffle our library. Next, we have Hero of Oroes. For one in a white, he's a 2-2 human soldier that says our aura spells cost one less to cast. This mana reduction will help us play many of our spells much faster if need be. He also has Heroic. Whenever we cast a spell that specifically targets Hero of Heroes, we put a 1-1 counter on him. Now, in the next section, we will be focusing on how a white deck can possibly draw in Enchantingly Drawn. First up, we have Core Spirit Dancer. For one in white, it's a 0-2 Core Wizard that gets plus two plus two for each aura attached to it. Whenever we cast an aura spell, we draw a card. Shram Senior Artificer for one in a white is a 2-2 Legendary Dwarf Advisor. Whenever we cast an aura or equipment or a vehicle spell, we draw a card. Mesa Enchantress for one in two white says whenever we cast an enchantment spell, we may draw a card, and she's a 0-2 human druid. Heliod's Pilgrim for one in a white is a 1-2 creature that when it enters the battlefield, we can search our library for an aura card, reveal it, and put it into our hand, and then shuffle our library. This type of tutor will help us get some of our strongest spells. Oromancer for two and white is a 2-2 human wizard. When it enters the battlefield, we can return target enchantment card from our graveyard to our hand. Now, let's look at the short list of enchantments that we can recur to provide additional pump and in some cases draw in reusable enchant. Sentinel's Eyes for one white mana gives a creature plus one plus one in Vigilance and has escape for one in two other cards from our graveyard. With our enchanters from the previous section, we can play this card again and again to get some extra card draw right from our graveyard. Spirit Loop for one in a white enchants a creature we control, and whenever that creature deals damage, we gain that much life. When Spirit Loop is put into a graveyard from play, we get to return it to our hand. Conviction for one in white is a enchantment that will give a creature plus one plus three, but if we pay one white mana, 
we can return it to its owner's hand. The beauty of this is this is basically a draw spell if we have even one of our enchanters out. Now our main goal is to play down some evasive creatures because this is how we will get our damage through. And let's do that in Clever and Cunning. For one colorless mana, we have Ginger Brute. It's a 1-1 food golem with haste. If we pay one, it can't be blocked except by creatures with haste. And if we pay two and sacrifice it, we can gain two life. Order of the Stars for one white mana is a 0-1 with Defender. As Order of the Stars comes into play, we choose a color. Order of the Stars has protection from the chosen color. Fairy Guide Mother for one white is a 1-1 flying creature. It also has Gift of the Fae. If we play it as an adventure, it costs one and a white, and a creature will get plus two, plus one in flying until end of turn. So not only does this card have evasion, it can grant evasion. Sargothian Angel, for one white, is a 1-1 flying vigilance creature, and Healer's Hawk is a 1-1 flying lifelink creature. Now that we have gotten one of these evasive creatures into play, our next goal is to make it as big as possible if we want any chance to win. And let's see how we do that in Touched by the Gods. For two and a white, Battle Mastery will give an enchanted creature double strike. For one colorless mana, Helm of the Gods will give an equipped creature plus one plus one for each enchantment creature we control, and it equips for one. Ethereal Armor for one white gives an enchanted creature plus one plus one for each enchantment we control, and it gives the creature first strike. That little bit of extra is great for that cost. All that glitters for one in white will give an enchanted creature plus one plus one for each artifact and enchantment we control. And Sage's Revelry is probably the best card in the deck for this effect. When it enters the battlefield, we'll draw cards equal to the number of ores we control that are attached to a creature. And the enchanted creature will get plus one plus one for each ore we control that's attached to a creature. Hyena's Umbra for one white is a creature enchantment that gives target creature plus one plus one and first strike and tome armor. Now we probably won't need it, but just in case, here's some extra evasion in Skyward. Angelic Gift for one and a white enchants a creature. When it comes into play, we draw a card. An enchanted creature will gain flying. Wings of Hubris for two colorless will give equipped creature flying. We can sacrifice the wings to give the equipped creature unblockable until the end of turn, but then we have to sacrifice that creature at the beginning of the next end step, and this equips for one. Key to the City costs two. If we tap it and discard a card, up to one target creature we control can't be blocked this turn. And whenever Key of the City becomes untapped, we can pay two, and if we do, we draw a card. So this is a little bit of extra card selection late game, and it can also help us get our damage through. Now, in some games, we won't be able to sneak through. So in these cases, some tokens will help us in going wide. Vanguard of Brahmas costs two white mana and is a 2-2 cat soldier with vigilance. Whenever he becomes target of a spell or ability, we put a 1-1 white cat soldier creature token with vigilance onto the battlefield. A Johnny's Chosen for 2 and 2 white is a 3-3 cat soldier. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under our control, we create a 2-2 white cat creature token. If the enchantment we played was an aura, it may attach to that token. Sigil of the Empty Throne for 3 and 2 white is an enchantment that says whenever we cast an enchantment, we make a 4-4 white angel token with flying. So we need to keep our opponent's problematic permanence out of our way if we're going to get our damage to, so we're going to do that by sending them to Oblivion. For one white mana, we have Mortal Obstinacy. It is an enchantment that gives a creature plus one plus one, and then whenever the enchanted creature deals damage to a player, we may choose to sacrifice this to destroy target enchantment. Bonds of Faith for one and a white can give one of our creatures that's human plus two plus two as long as it's human. Otherwise, it works as a pathicism on a non-human creature, so that's great to play on our opponent's stuff. These two-for-one cards really help out. Soul Tithe, for one and a white, can enchant any non-land permanent, but at the beginning of the upkeep of that enchanted permanent's controller, that player has to sacrifice it unless they pay X colorless, where X is its converted mana. This is good because it works as a removal spell if they just don't want to pay for it, and if they do, we will essentially be taxing our opponent for the rest of the game for that permanent. 
Journey to Nowhere for one in a white. When it enters the battlefield, we exile target creature, and when Journey to Nowhere leaves the battlefield, we return the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control. This is just a good removal spell, and since it's in Chem, it's going to count for most of our things that give bonuses. Banishing Light for two and a white lets us uh, exile target permanent when it enters the battlefield, and that permanent will come back into play when it leaves the battlefield. And Oblivion Ring for two and a white does the same. Next, we have Faith Unbroken for three and a white. It's going to give a creature we control plus two plus two. And when it enters the battlefield, we exile a target creature on opponent controls, and it'll stay in exile until Faith Unbroken leaves play. Skybind for three and two white has Constellation. Whenever Skybind or another enchantment enters the battlefield under our control, we exile target non-enchantment permanent, and then we'll return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. This is important because we can use this to kind of blink some of our own permanents as long as they're non-enchantments, but it's even better for blinking opponent's creatures until the end of our turn out of play and getting rid of blockers. Winds of Wrath costs 3 and 2 white and destroys all creatures that aren't enchanted. They can't be regenerated. This is a very good one-sided board wipe for us. Now that we have gone through all the cards in the deck, let's see what we have in the mana base. We're going to be running Rogue's Passage for a little bit of extra evasion to get our damage through and 20 planes. Now that we have looked at all the cards in the deck, let's do a quick price check. Our deck prices include our Oathbreaker and the shipping cost, but not the cost of basic land. And these costs are based on the best available prices on TCG Player at the time of recording. The average deck cost for a Teo the Shield Mage deck on Oathbreaker.edhrec.com is $77.32. Our deck is much lower at $23.87. If you want to see a breakdown of the deck's cost, there will be a link posted in the description. This deck was built on a budget, but if you have some resources, here are some betterments and improvements you might want to consider. We suggest you add Open the Vault. It will return all artifacts and enchantments from our graveyard to the battlefield under their owner's control. So to add it, we suggest removing Faith Unbroken. Reconnaissance for one white will allow us to remove target to creature we control from combat and untap it. With a little bit of clever behavior, we can use this to give our creatures pseudo vigilance or we can see how an opponent will block or if they have any tricks and then remove our creatures from combat before damage is dealt. So it's very useful. To add it, we'll remove Mortal Obstinacy. Giver of Wounds for one white is a 1-2 core cleric that can tap to give target creature with control protection from colorless or from the color of our choice. This is really good protection. It's also a great way to try to get our creatures through by giving them protection from the colors our opponents are playing. To add it, we're gonna remove Key to the City. Authority of Consoles costs one white. Creatures our opponents control enter the battlefield tapped, and whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our opponents control, we gain one life. This creatures entering tapped is wonderful because it means our opponents will always have less blockers. It also means that we're going to gain enough life to kind of stay ahead, which is usually good in Oathbreaker. We'll remove Journey to Nowhere. We also suggest adding Legion's Landing. For one white mana, it's a legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, we create a 1-1 one, one white vampire creature token with lifelink. Uh, when we attack with three or more creatures, we'll transform it. It becomes a Danto, the first fort. We can tap it for a white mana, or we can pay two in white and tap it to create one one white vampire creature tokens with lifelink. To add it, we're going to remove Hyena Umbra. Now that we've gone through the deck, please let me know what you think, what you like and what you didn't, and what you want to see me brew up next. If you like the deck list or any cards in it, you can support the channel by shopping tcgplayer.com using my link in the description. And if you need custom gaming supplies, check out Inked Gaming. And you can use their affiliate link in the description as well as they do support the channel. If you want more deck tech content, then check out the Oath Breakdown playlist or the Holly Deck playlist here on the end card. And a huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. So please remember to subscribe. Thanks again, and I'm off to Oathbreak Another Deck.